Hey, travelers. Another week and the weather's changed. <laughs> it's crisp. It's very crisp. Brisk? Brisk. Yeah. Overcast today. We're not getting blinded. So at least yeah, that's, that's a thing. That, I guess that's nice. So we we are racing a snow a rainstorm. We here. are racing a rainstorm. So let's jump right into the first beer, huh? Yeah, yeah. And uh, this this week it's all about Porter, and I may have uh, jumped the shark a little bit, or uh, you know jumped into uh, a shark. Yeah, I, ju- I didn't jump into the shark, but when you're in in the store looking for beer, I feel like I jumped into and a you're, shark. And you're going uh, like twenty twenty is a shark. Uh, twenty twenty is a shark. <laughs> a great white one. Yeah. Just chewing us all up. Uh, so one one of the beers today is is probably a little. Uh, it's it's seasonal, but it might be a little early. Oh, the peppermint. But one? yes, yeah. but uh, this this one is is not early. This one's actually been sitting in the fridge for a while, and uh, it's from Solomoth. Yeah, it's a uh, Belgian chocolate porter. Ooh, all those words made me happy. Yeah, right. Um, so I've actually been to Solomoth Brewing. Yeah, I was there. Uh, being I don't work at Menards anymore, I feel like I can tell this story. They flew yeah. me down there to shoot some video. I shot some video, and then I went to Solomoth. I had a, no I had doubt. A, I had a, one of my employees with me, and guess who they, they're driving? Not this guy. That way. <laughs> yeah. You so, make someone else drive, and you go, they, hey. Hey, I'm in charge. I get to drink. That's right. <laughs> Company box, I don't care. That being said, Solomoth was a fantastic brewery. Uh, they made a lot of Belgian beers. I know in this area, uh, especially if you're down in the Madison area, you can get a lot of their, uh, you know, they come out of the Chicago area, I should yep, probably specify. Yep, yep. So they come out of the Chicago area, and you can definitely get a lot of their hazies up in this area, but not so much anything else because, you know. Like that. Like this. So I'm actually really excited for this beer. And we should also start off by saying porters are innately a English style. Yes. Which uh, is why I love porters. Yeah. And like an English porter versus an American porter, like any other beer we've ever talked about on this show, we've just intensified the heck out of it. Because right. an English porter, if you get like, not all English porters are made the same, but I would say generally speaking, if you were to go there and get a, what they would call a pre-industrial porter. Okay, okay. And it's called a porter because the porters that loaded and unloaded their ships drank it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're a little lighter, almost like a heavy brown ale, I would say. So it's like this, you know, the porter's like the the way stop between the brown and the stout. And I was gonna say, you know, you look at it, you can you can still you can still see a little bit of uh, light yeah. through it, you know, just a little bit. You know, on the SRM scale, I would say this is probably a a thirty five. Sure. Somewhere in there, forty being pitch black. So it's mm. got that nice roasty porter back end on it the belgian vibe kind of the smaller <clears throat> bubbles than what porters usually have yeah usually they're a bit more silky larger bubbles these are a bit more uh like small and champagne compact yeah yeah not much for head retention no not really but there again like i said i think this has almost been sitting in there for two years now oh really yeah <laughs> i just kept moving it around yeah you know it, it's moving Fridge into ghost. the back moving to the front and the bottom into the back and up to the top again and into the back. You know, when you got a beer fridge, you got to have to. You said this keep is a chocolate, around. Belgian chocolate. Mm. So I think that's where you're getting that dark chocolate, those dark chocolate notes. Yeah, I mean, obviously, chocolate. Not all chocolate are are the same, you know. But you know, oftentimes you see more of a milk chocolate where it's not quite <clears> a <throat> chocolate bitterness. Like you get almost like a baking chocolate. But I say this kind of leans on that side a little heavier, more like that chocolate bitter. That bitter, yeah, that bitter chocolate. Mm-hmm. But that's what you're going to get with European chocolates anyway, because unless you're in England and having Cadbury, I I don't I haven't seen any milk chocolate over there other than that. Like Milka, Milka is the big one, the one in the purple package with the cow, the Milka cows. Like sure. the, they just have like one company that makes all their chocolate in Europe. Yeah, just Milka, Milka. You, you make it. And to yeah. be fair, like I would take Milka milk chocolate over any milk chocolate bars like mass sure. produced in this country any day. I, I didn't have any bad chocolate while I was there. Oh, it, yeah. was, it was fantastic. Usually a little, a little bit more refined. Europeans aren't as obsessed with sugar as we are. What? Yeah, Americans love sugar. Not in America. You see that in our IPAs too. You know, like we can't, we cannot help ourselves. We just put sugar in everything. You know, uh, you know. I think we should put some lactose in that, and then uh, maybe a little extra unfermentable sugar. <laughs> they can't even call American Subway bread bread in Europe anymore. At least Ireland. In Ireland, yeah. yeah they, it's got it's too a, much sugar. It's a, it's a pastry. It's got too much sugar. Yeah. So, what's that say about us? You know? Well, <laughs> look around. 
In my case, look down. Yeah, that's well. <laughs> doesn't look as bad as it used to, but it's still not. <laughs> still not good. Still not great. <laughs> America. I feel like that should be our slogan. <laughs> not bad. I think that, or that could be 2020. We're all still kind of alive. But We're all great. still somewhat alive. Yeah. So uh, speaking of beers that you've forgotten about, uh, this next beer I've actually talked about several times on the vlog and saying that we were going to drink it at some point and we just never drank it. And I think I've been talking about it for about two years because it's from 2018 and I, I meant to open it. But the good news is it says enjoy it now or age it for several years. I However, most smoked, smoked beers I don't age because I fear that the smoke is going to drop out. Yeah. I would also say, or actually, before we even dive into this, uh, I was offered by Zach. He's got a five-year vertical of this beer that he wants to do on this show. No kidding. Yeah, he's got a five. I'm like, why do you have a five-year old vertical of Alaskan Smoke Port? He's like, why not? He's like, I honestly couldn't tell you. He's like, one day I was just in my basement, I realized I had a vertical. So every year he bought it without realizing that he was buying it every year or something And like just that. never drank it. Yeah. That's so. that's when you know you got a, a beer buying problem. Yeah, that's also. I mean, that's how that's how you get a vertical, though. That is how you get a vertical. So maybe yeah. one day uh, we'll have to get Zach on here and do a five five verticals of uh, a smoke porter. Yeah. But Alaskan Brewing is a brewery that confuses me. They're very affordable beers. Yeah. Six packs, yep. and yet how? I'm how? not sure because the the shipping costs alone from Alaska to get it here, unless unless someone's brewing it down here in yeah. the on you know the, the lower 48 yeah uh to my knowledge no one I, I don't think so either but shipping it alone from Juno to where we are and i think they're in most of the lower 48 yeah can you imagine the cost how is this not like a 12 dollar six pack you know i have no idea <laughs> or how is how is that bottle not 25 yeah right <laughs> i think it goes for like it's dirt cheap it's like eight bucks or something like that yeah, so uh, smoked beers are, uh, they've been around for a while, a long time. Yeah. Uh, Rausch beers, am I pronouncing that correct, out of Germany? Uh, I was. Know, I rely on you for pronunciation. Th that word in German, I don't know. Fair enough. Uh, Rausch beers, typically uh, 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 smoked lagers. Yep. And you can get Grotskis out of Poland, also a smoked style oh, of beer. Oh, okay. And not a lot of breweries make Grotskis. I think it might be an ale versus a lager. Might be the only distinguishing factor. But I'm I'm not gonna lie to you. I haven't had a lot of Polish beers or or somebody that has on their beer menu. Uh, we made this uh, Polish style. Yeah, I've always, I would I would question it. I was on a, I was at a brewery on a, on a uh, area of town in Pittsburgh called Polish Hill. Oh, so they had a bunch of Grotskis at all times, just sure. because if you're gonna be on Polish Hill. You should well, probably yeah. You know. That being said, uh, you get the smoke on, on in the beer. Um, everyone always asks if you put liquid smoke in, and I'm sure some breweries have done that, but the traditional way is just to smoke the malt. Yep. Then when you brew with that malt, the smoke coating will come off the malt and impregnate the beer with that smoky deliciousness. Now, the fun part slash difficult part is consistency. When you have when you have a product that you – because, like, smoking malt is – though, you know, these guys are scientists. They've been doing it for years hundreds of years in some cases it's still not a you know you know sometimes the smoke sticks better than other years right. i don't know why right so it's always kind of a, a fun beer to do a vertical with huh? yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. a I little get, a little bit of smoke on the can't yeah, just take a kiss of smoke on the nose it smells like a s smoked meat <laughs> your phone every time <laughs> i don't know that anybody can hear it i don't know if these mics pick it up mm. However, my ring, my uh, notification uh, on my phone is from, I, I think it was Windows 95. There was a free golf game that came with Windows 95. And uh, when you hit it into the rough, it said, oh, it's in the deep stuff. Yep. And so that goes off sometimes at 3 in the morning. It uh, scares the crap out of my wife. Yeah, rightfully so. Yeah. So this, the uh, I'd say the porter half of the smoke porter is very light, almost English. Uh, I would say a defining factor between English and American is like just that coffee roasted flavor. Right, right. So this, I think the porter half of this is definitely more of an English. I would like to have a current one to see how smoky it is mm -hmm. because I feel like the smoke has dropped out. Yeah, I'd say a it's just, just a kiss of smoke in there. Yeah. But, I mean, we've had some bonfire beers. We had some beers. I, we've, had, we've had some trash fire beers. One. One trash fire beer. Uh, <clears throat> the brewery doesn't exist anymore, and I'm still not going to call them out. So yeah, uh, it was it was uh it was, it was a memorable gross.
beer. And I and uh, if if we ever meet in person and we have a beer, I'll tell you the story. Mm-hmm. But uh, I won't do it on the YouTubes. Yeah, smoked beers are incredibly difficult to get correct. You know, to get, to do well, to do palatable. Yeah, they're probably one of the most controversial. Like if you're if you're having a party and all you have is smoked beer, you're gonna piss off at least half of your audience, if not more. If not more. Yeah. Um, I, I would be there going, woo, yeah. yeah. But I, I would be one of the few. I actually discovered something back in the day when I was working at Lazy Monk. Leo would make his smoke bock. Yeah, uh, and it was delicious. Every other yeah, year yeah. So. it was very good. And I found if you drank the smoke bock while eating, because they also sold, sold those lanyangers, those Yeah, uh, the smoked, sausages. Yeah, smoked yep. sausages. The dried sausage, yeah. Yeah. Had a little smoky flavor to it. That if you ate those, that that smokiness of the meat would just kind of tamp out the smokiness of the bock, and you would just get the beer flavor, and you wouldn't necessarily get that smoking. So, yeah, I'm not just. It's a it's a beer pairing that I'd like to experiment more with. If like if you make a complex beer and then you make it a smoked beer, if then pairing that with a smoked meat, if right. that would allow that the complexity of the beer to stand out. Because if you're just drinking this, like we are in a backyard, which is acceptable by all yep. means. Uh, you definitely are you you are you are drinking a lot of smoke though. Now I will give you this. So this is a two year old beer. I've had way smokier beers. Uh, I've had beers where, you know, they, they typically this kind of kind of beer if you order it in a bar will come in a snifter. I've had it where I picked up the snifter and I went, and oh. all I got was, ooh, that's oh. a lot of smoke. <laughs> Hello, <clears throat> that's always a one of my favorite beers to put in a sample flight. Throw a smoked beer in there if you're in a flight, because if it's if it's a rough one, you only got five ounces. You can move right. on. You can shoot it and leave it. But it, it, but you know if you come across a brewery who knows how to handle their smoked beers, you might be in for a pleasant. And then that's a, a good way to see if you want an actual pint of it. You know that. Uh, but that sample place is crucial for the smoked beer. Like you, you need to you need to test drive that guy. It's uh it's pro it's it's improbable, not impossible, improbable that someone from Dangerous Man actually watches this show. Uh. <laughs> but dangerous man, I'd love to see what they do for a, a smoked beer. That Have would, they never that made would one? Really, I, to my knowledge, I've never had one there. <coughs> but I'm not saying that they haven't. Yeah, I bet they would do a good one, but they do everything oh, well, so no doubt. And I know we sing their praises often on here, and, and it's not anything that really anybody can attain unless you live in Minneapolis, and we don't. So we get them sparingly, but we enjoy it when we do. So this is what I would consider. Ooh. This is what I would smell. consider a Christmas beer. I haven't smelled it yet. Let me smell it from there. That was my question. No. This has got a nose on it. I'm actually really excited. So for this, this one. is Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Peppermint Porter. Now, Kentucky's known for making all bourbon barrel aged beers. They're uh, they're known just for I mean the the bourbon barrel stout that they make yeah. is, is a really good one. Uh, the name of the company is Lexington Brewing and Distilling, uh, and they make whiskey. I think that's how they got their start. And I could be wrong. I, I haven't read the website in a spell, but yeah. they started by making whiskey. Then they're like, hey, why don't we age our own beer in these barrels? Which makes sense because I think yeah. they were selling a bunch of barrels, and they're like, wait a minute, why don't we just yeah yeah you know do it ourselves. And then proceeded to probably make some of the best barrel-aged everyday beers you can possibly buy. I think so. Like, yeah. Honestly, Kentucky Bourbon Ale is is quite easily the most, because it's a blonde ale. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost perfect as far as barrel aging is concerned. You know, if you don't like barrel-aged beers, you won't like it, obviously. But, you know, every, every beer, you know, I wouldn't say that they're necessarily the most... Uh, as a brewer, they're not making a ton of varieties. They're not experimenting with all these. You know, they only they have like three core beers, and then they have a seasonal. That's it. But like, they do all of those perfect. Yeah, and so. and this one I have never seen. Yeah, I'm pretty Brand sure new. this is the first time they've ever done it. Yeah, but as far I'm as I know, this is just I was excited. About this it. just hit the market like a week or so ago. It smells like chocolate and peppermint. And like the peppermint stout, I think you turned me onto the peppermint stouts with Mankato Brewing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was the first one I've ever had, and it's a kind of an underappreciated subcategory of stout or porter, whatever. Well, and I think theirs is a stout, but you know, I've never—I don't think I've ever had a mint porter before. I think a better way to phrase that is peppermint is an underutilized ingredient in beer. Agreed. Yes, a hundred percent. Of Especially, all of the nonsense we've been putting into beer. Yeah. <laughs> Especially around this time of the year. I mean, you st- we're starting to get. Uh, you know, I'm already in the Christmas mood, but I was in July, so that's you know, that's just me. But uh, that is just you. That is just me. <laughs> Can I be in like 
the Thanksgiving mood every weekend. Just sure. Like a big turkey dinner. Yeah. 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 This would go well at Thanksgiving, though, too. Mm-hmm. Like an after-dinner beer. Oh, this is fantastic. Yeah. Oh, once again, none of our, our – for weirdly enough, none of these beers have been overly – no, dark as no, far no, no. as porters are but concerned. But that's that's the way they should be. I you should. Um, I would say all three of these are unique porters, and that this one included are, are definitely the porters more of that English lighter body yes. than the American. Yep. Which I think makes ultimately a better base, especially when you're adjuncting it, whether it be Belgian chocolate or or smoke or peppermint. Yep. Mm. I'm gonna have to get a four pack of this. This is fantastic. Yeah. Whew. This is really good. Mm. Sorry, sorry, Alaskan Brewing. <laughs> <coughs> I, I've I've enjoyed all of the beers yeah. today except this one. Uh, this was a good one to finish on. <laughs> yeah, this is tickling the fancy, right, right, right there. And you don't really get a lot of booze. I mean, I get almost zero booze. You yeah. get that that peppermint kind of just hits hits the tongue, and it's not. It's a smooth peppermint, and it just kind of. You, I could actually give this to my mom. Yeah, like you give this to non beer drinkers. Because it doesn't even taste like beer. No, it tastes like a like. It tastes like a peppermint chocolate uh, dessert. Yeah, it's liquid. I've literally had yeah. cookies. What's that uh, peppermint cookie? Oh, the the Girl Scout one. Yeah, yeah, the uh, peppermint patties. Yeah, whatever those are. That's yeah, what this thin reminds mints? me. Yeah, thin, thin mints. mints. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. reminds me of a thin mint almost. It's really good. <laughs> what I call them? peppermint patty? <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. I knew what you were talking about. But. <laughs> No, Thin Mint would be the, the number one descriptor I would put in my... If I was writing a thing for this. Yeah. Oh, well, that made me happy. Not disappointed at all. Yeah. Really glad <laughs> I picked that up. Not even remotely sad. I'm about glad that. I couldn't find two other smoked beers today and that <laughs> I just decided to go with the porters. You're like, ah, porters. Yeah. I mean, you said we're going to do smoked beers. When was the last time that we've done a porter episode? <laughs> I mean, porters are probably one of the most... Not only can you not find a ton of them... I would say but, they're one of the more bastardized styles. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, I'll just put a bunch of coffee in it. Which yeah, is fine. Well, that's fine, but everybody's done that. Yeah, that's Why don't a, you put some peppermint in it and barrel age it? Ah, huh, well. I don't think I've seen you smile this much on an episode in a long yeah, time. Yeah, I, I haven't had a beer that blew my skirt up like this. <laughs> I drink a lot of beer, Landon. You have to really. I know, I know. You got you to gotta yeah. do something to impress me at this point. <laughs> Glad I could. Yeah. I'm also, you know, it's fall. What can you say? I know. I made the right choice. What can yeah. I say? You know your stuff. However, the storm is moving in, so <laughs> I will remind you that we still have time to donate to the American Cancer Society. I will put a link in the bottom. I'm itching for that haircut. Uh, yeah. <laughs> November first, uh, or at least at the beginning of November, is when we're gonna we're gonna get. Uh, he's gonna get his mop shaved off, and I'll get my beard trimmed off. Trimmed, not trimmed, shaved. She thinks she's gonna raise uh, straight blade me, but I don't know that I trust. I feel her like that every much. wife wants to do that. I I feel like twenty five <laughs> years of marriage, it that's what it would take. We're only at fifteen. It's a, it's another <laughs> decade. You're right. Give me yeah. one more decade of life before you botch this. Right. One. If I make it that long, then I'll go. Well, it's been a good run. Yeah. I feel like that's a wife's excuse to be like. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, she uh, starts talking about to you about insurance like a couple of days. Like, what's our wife insurance policy? Be very worried. She knows. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that uh, check us out on the so- on the social medias: Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter. Do all the things, and uh, and of course, right here on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. And uh, where else do you get commentary about peppermint porn? And two guys sitting in the backyard, right? Yeah. Not many, not yeah, many YouTube yeah. channels. Two guys sitting in the backyard every week. I can tell Just you that. Complaining about the weather like old men. That's right. <laughs> Get off my lawn. No. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you next week, everybody. Prost. Hey, everybody! Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, you can click down below where there's some more episodes for you to watch. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on episodes that you do watch. We hope to see you next time.